Welcome back to Atlanta and Company, everyone. I'm Christine Pallara. At some point in your life, you or someone you know will be affected by heart disease. That's why we're continuing our partnership with Gwinnett Medical Center to get the foremost information on fighting heart disease and heart healthy recipes the entire family will love. As we continue our series, Take the Pledge for a Healthier Heart, we're joined by Dr. Philip Rahm, an interventional cardiologist at Gwinnett Medical Center. Welcome, doctor. Thank you, Christine. It's so great to have you here. I appreciate being here. And we've had uh, several of your colleagues, your GMC colleagues, colleagues talk about maintaining a healthy heart, but today you want to talk more about modifying the risk factors as it relates to maintaining a healthy weight. Very important. We all know that it goes hand in hand when we talk about obesity, and then unfortunately we see a lot of people who have obesity or who are overweight have heart problems. So tell us more about what we can do to modify these risks. Well, the three of the major risk factors for heart disease are hypertension, elevated blood pressure, um, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, and diabetes. And when we uh, talk about risk factor modification and other risk factors, all of these things are related uh, at least in part and sometimes in large part to weight. So maintaining a healthy weight is an extremely important component of modifying one's risk for heart disease. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people we all know it's important to keep our weight down, it's important to exercise, but why is it critical in terms of our heart? Well. The body contains fat normally. However, excess fat, especially fat around the waist, is associated with higher levels of cholesterol and triglycerides, higher blood pressure levels, um, greater risk of developing diabetes, which is a very, very important risk factor, right. and subsequently higher rates of heart disease and stroke. So. Even if we lose, I mean, it's it, maybe somebody who has a lot of weight to lose, they're just thinking, oh, you know, what's, what's five or 10 pounds gonna do? But actually, it, it can do a lot. Just that little bit getting you started on the right track, correct? Well, it can do a tremendous amount. Uh, in fact, there's a study that was published just today in the Annals of Internal Medicine that looked at risk factors for diabetes. And they identified five major lifestyle components that affected the development of diabetes over time. These included eating a healthy diet, um, maintaining a good weight, or whatever your body mass index was as a reflection of your weight, exercising regularly, alcohol intake, and smoking. What they showed is that the most significant factor in terms of your risk of developing diabetes is your weight. Mm -hmm. And those people that maintained a healthy BMI or body mass index reduce their chance of diabetes by 70 to 80% for both men and women. That's great. So clearly this is directly related to sure. heart disease because diabetes is an extremely potent risk factor for heart disease. Right, absolutely. But you know, we talk about the actual definition of overweight. What some of us, oh, I'm, some of us who may think, oh, I'm, I'm fat and they're clearly not. So is there a standard? How, how do we know if we need to gain or we need to lose? What's like a common standard that's used? Well, as I said, body mass index is the standard that we use. So this is a way to calculate um, whether you're overweight or not through a standardized method. Um, so body mass index or BMI is a calculation of your weight as it relates to your height. And for both adult men and women, this is a good indication of whether or not you're at a healthy weight or an unhealthy weight. So if you calculate your BMI, a BMI of less than 25 is considered uh, normal weight. A BMI of less than 18.5 is considered underweight. Still not necessarily unhealthy, but it's considered underweight. A BMI of between 25 and 29.9 is considered overweight. And once the BMI exceeds 30, then that person is considered obese. Uh, you can go to our website at facebook.com mm -hmm. slash uh, Gwinnett Medical, and you can calculate your BMI with a formula on that page. Right, I know. I, both times that I had my BMI checked about six weeks after the baby, of course, it was in the high 20s, being that you're gaining weight for the baby, your body was adjusting to accommodating a, a, another life in you, but it, and it's, it takes some work to, to get that lowered, but it's just with the diet and exercise, you can do it. And for anybody's out there who's watching, who's really wanting to just you know, take that first step, but just needs the right push or shove, what would you say to them? Well, you really have to be self-motivated. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, uh, if we look at large numbers of people in the population over decades, so these are normal, healthy people, the average weight gain 
over a four-year period of time is about 3.35 pounds every four years. So over 20 years, the average adult can expect to gain over 16 pounds. Now, what were the components uh, or the factors that resulted in greater weight gain or less weight gain? So those people that gained more weight were those that ate potato chips, sure. those that ate potatoes, um, those that consumed sweetened uh, beverages mm -hmm. such right. as soda, yeah. uh, those people that ate red meat, oh. those people that consumed processed meats, uh, people that consumed alcohol, and actually weight gain correlated with the higher number of hours of TV that you watch per day. Wow. Um, the people Makes that sense. lost weight <laughs> yeah. were those people that were physically active, people that ate a lot of fruits and vegetables, nuts, and yogurt. Okay. So those are just some tips to get you started as far as selecting healthy lifestyle choices right. that will help you at least not gain weight and hopefully lose weight if you need to lose weight. Right, and one last question, Doc, as I have a, a pot roast that I made overnight. I, I love to do that at <laughs> least you know every two weeks. So what's, what's the, the call on red meat? Well, what I typically have told people, and this is something I learned many years ago as a medical resident, is if you're following a good healthy diet, every two weeks or so, take what I call a cheat day. Okay. Which means that on that day, right. you eat the things that you want to eat. Okay. And you can tailor that to special events in your life, holidays, et cetera. Okay. But if you do all your cheating on that one day and maintain a good diet the rest of the time, you're going to be fine. Okay. So I will enjoy my pot roast, but I'll, I'll lay off the red meat the, for a couple of weeks then. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. Your great advice. And if you are interested in more tips discussed today, please go to 11alive.com slash take the pledge to get more tips along with taking the pledge to have a healthy heart. After you do so, you'll receive a free pedometer and you'll be entered to win a monthly drawing for an iPod Nano. Now, last month's winner is Phyllis Rector. She's from Lawrenceville. So congratulations, Phyllis. You'll be getting your Nano in the mail. And I'm telling you, if you want to get concerned and get heart smart, please, please go to our website and take the pledge. And this segment was paid for by Gwinnett Medical Center.